For some reason, they have not been widely used in the battle against COVID at home rapid tests. Yes, and the Biden administration is hoping to change that, spending nearly $2 billion to help get more rapid tests into long term care facilities, community centers, homeless shelters, prisons, and lots of other places. They're also partnering with major re retailers to make them cheaper for everyone else. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain how at home rapid tests work and when we should use them. Thanks to COVID, everyone's had a crash course on immunology, but it can still be confusing. Generally, there are three different tests for COVID. There's a blood antibody test that looks for your immune response to having already been infected. Then there are PCR or molecular tests that look for the genetic material of any virus present. That is considered the gold standard, but the results take time. And then there are the tests we're focused on here. Those are called rapid antigen tests or simply rapid tests. And here's how they work. Rapid antigen tests use a nasal swab to collect a sample from the nose, just like the fancier PCR tests. But these are looking for something completely different. Rapid tests look for actual pieces of the virus, specifically something called the nucleocapsid protein, which is also referred to as an antigen. And that's why rapid tests are also called antigen tests. This nucleocapsid protein is different from the well-known spike protein, but it's just as important for the function of the virus. If any of this nucleocapsid protein is found by the test, it can be marked, most often by a line appearing in the results area. Now, there are currently seven rapid tests that have authorization for use as a home test. While the underlying technique of marking the antigen is the same, they each have different steps that need to be followed before you get a result. And while some have results that can easily be read by the patient, like a home pregnancy test would be, others require a smartphone and some fancy gadgetry to interpret the result. The results of these tests are generally available in about 15 minutes. Now, it's important to understand, these rapid tests are not perfect. Because they measure actual amounts of virus protein, they become more sensitive when there is more virus present. So, at the start of an infection, before there's a lot of virus, they may be falsely negative. But, if the test is repeated in a couple of days when there's more virus, it's more likely to turn positive. That's called serial testing, and it's the recommended strategy to monitor someone after an exposure. That way, you can pick it up as soon as it's detectable and decrease quarantine time. Another good use for rapid tests is screening before an event, like a party, for example. The important thing in that situation is that when you're testing people that don't have symptoms or a known exposure, the test is less sensitive because an asymptomatic person, even if they have COVID, isn't likely to be shedding as much virus. Now, the good news is they are also less likely to be highly contagious because they are shedding less virus. The fact is, home rapid tests aren't as accurate as PCR testing done in a lab. But while we might strive for the highest accuracy of the PCR test, what good does it do if the results take 24 hours or more to return? By that time, if a person is positive, they've potentially already exposed their close contacts. Rapid tests allow for easy, less expensive repeat tests at a time when the result is most relevant. In a situation where someone was directly exposed to COVID or has symptoms that could be COVID, serial negative rapid tests can be used to keep a person out of quarantine while the more sensitive PCR results are being completed. Now, finally, I want to point out these tests are not free. Even with the federal government now partially subsidizing cost, they'll probably still be between $5 and $15 each, leaving many people to still decide whether frequent repeat testing, which is really the goal, is worth the personal cost. Back to you.